What's up guys? This is the Brosman and I am back to bring you to the next episode of my Empire to the Wall. Let's play as Louisiana. So to round off where we left off, um, I was blitzkrieging north to knock out the Iroquois Confederacy and we are laying siege to the last remaining city and they have decided to sally out. So without further ado, let us fight this engagement. So this will be the end of the Iroquois Confederacy. We will then technically I think have no enemies. There will naturally be risks of a future conflict with the 13 colonies. But apart from that, I think we have some interesting opportunities to expand in the Caribbean. But I'll get into all that mess at a later date. Because right now I've got to set up a battle line to get ready to wear down their, their forces. So those guys are going to spread out. As well, not many of these chaps on this flank. Let's put the native auxiliary on the left, pikes in the center, some native tribesmen on the right. Then we'll split some cavalry positions up on either flank. So the fair suspicion, I think, is that they will have units advancing towards us in stealth mode. So let's get ready to... Oh, I've got to get my general back. Let's start to uh, scout with our cavalry, especially considering they don't actually have any cavalry outside of their general, unless their cavalry can hide or manoeuvre while hidden, which is entirely possible. But the idea... So these goes up to the woods. Uh -huh. So let's stop these guys from firing, because they will. Now let's get my cavalry out away from those warriors because they've done quite a, quite a number on my cavalry. So let's get them out to safety, engage my troops to engage them with musket fire. throw our natives into the mix as well. Let's get this coverage, chase down the bowmen. African warriors on the flank. Okay, they are going to charge the bowmen because there's only another bow unit which should probably be uncomfortable with being charged by cavalry. Probably do a massive amount of damage. I'm probably going to want to pull back. Yeah. Spam click just to make sure they do come back. So here they come. Absolutely going to be sending my cavalry into this mess. It's in the weak. No, I don't send them. Okay, I guess they must come in. So my colonial light to go engage their their cavalrymen. charge their line with our troops as they come in. Let's 
Provincial Cavs sat the currently idle. It's a child of the native unit. Hopefully make them waver or route. Nope, get my cavalry out of dodge. Deploy my infantry into the mix. Target my cavalry to another point further down the line, such as along over here. Flank, which is understandable. So you guys engage the native warriors. Bring my cavalry over on the right flank to help them out. Deploy my pikes onto this flank as well. We're losing some cavalry on the flank, but that's to be expected. run the native warrior auxiliary over these guys form more of a traditional battle line get our cavalry back out I'd like them to smash into the back of this formation here These are bowmen, so and I'm holding the I'm holding this flank because I want to try and break them on the on this flank here. These guys just fire and load of fire as, as well as you can. damage being done. You guys engage the bowmen. Run the pikes into these bowmen, run the militia off to the right. So there's a chance they could get a local advantage on this flank, but I'd like to imagine. Recharge the bowmen. focus on this unit of Native American warriors, of which there is not much. Need this form line. Understandably we're getting some mess and morale problems now. over to attack that bowman. These men start to run over here to position themselves for the flank battle. Cavalry around. Bring the general back to hit that unit of musketmen, although they should be suffering because we've got quite accurate fire coming in now. They are going to suffer some amount because bowmen are just really good. Let's start to bring troops over on mass. You just charge the bowmen, I suppose. Get my cavalry behind my lines. This has been a bit of a bloodbath. Should you make angles at the chief's bodyguard? You can probably hit that bowman, you're sufficiently weak, you're not going to do too much. You 
useful stuff. New Halt Fire. Yeah. Those native units getting shot in the back. Despite our battered troops, I mean, you charge the bowmen. Where's Mon General? Ah, some hidden bowmen. run my cavalry around their cavalry in order to try and get some unit kills. You can temporarily fire. You might get a down a few chief's bodyguard or not. You may end up killing your own men. General back to safety. Okay, I think the ultimate aim we have to just charge in because we're starting to take a lot of attrition. Which means my pikey boys are going to be front and center. You balance some of my infantry line. You guys halt firing the way you're firing. Just march my pikes towards their gunners. All of you guys. Or well, the guys that are firing. You guys stop. We are bowmen, but we're also going to got to remember that we are going to start to get the What's that noise? We're going to start to get the advantage in terms of uh, firepower Send these guys after the general's bodyguard And now I feel confident enough sending my general to go hunt down bad guys to charge them. The pikes will be enough to take out the chief's bodyguard. So then let's just get everyone on slicing and dicing duty. These guys should be okay to shoot until maybe now we'll fire and get into a better position they should suffer against my native warrior auxiliary just charge down there can you get back quickly Chief's bodyguard is not going to do too much against. Oh, we actually got him. Absolutely, we need to continue. So I'm going to merge lots of my troops together, although they're probably going to abandon this fight, fight and instead go for the garrison bowmen. Just get all my cavalry back here to chase down the bow unit. Fighting head on with the natives, it's dangerous work.
very dangerous. They're very capable in hand-to-hand -hand fighting, and I've not got the firepower to hold them off. But now we do have the numbers advantage, at least. So I'm going to merge my armies together. That'll help reduce our uh, income problem, and it'll help solve... Well, <laughs> help our income problem. Go on, pirates. I was hoping they would sail one near me. Close enough for me to hijack. Okay, so you guys have prompted I should start to crank, really crank down the levels of tax. Well, reduce the amount of Im impact on tax, so I can reduce the impact tax on the nobility to try and earn a bit more wealth or grow the wealth. And also reduce the lower classes again to try and get more um, growth within my regions. It's not really something I actually mess around with, um, but I'm going to give it a go. So I crank the taxes right down. Probably won't see any direct bonuses yet. But I think the only thing I can really do, the only thing I'm going to want to do, is to merge some of these high quality units together to try and maintain some sort of army spend some money Ooh, that's a lot of cash I'm trying to replenish them all but it's my main army got to do it even though it's going to take a lot of my cash Cool. Can't do anything else in terms of trade and whatnot, so let's just hit end turn. So right now we are in a fairly privileged position in that our only exposed front line in terms of a land threat is to the north against the 13 colonies. We are allied with the Cherokee. So unless they break that alliance, we should be okay. Oh, and they're selling out again. I wouldn't be surprised if this is their last chance. But yes, we've... We're in a decent position. I've got an okay navy. Certainly one that's good enough to help defend my interests. It may be wise to try and take the Pueblo Nations out. Because they would give me a direct landline to New Mexico. I have to be really careful of this, because even though I've got more men than they do, they're not exactly slouches. So I'm going to want to deploy forward. Even though they can advance for me, they can advance towards me when they're hidden. I don't like the idea of them advancing through trees to get to me. God, you know, auxiliaries left on the flank. Can't deploy with anything. Let's bundle the weak cavalry together. This is very, very slim pickings. So we are going to want to send... Bringing goes back. Let's send. I'm going to speed this up. But let's send some guys out to try and find hidden enemy units. There they are. They are advancing, so I am going to need to do something like this to take into advantage my to take advantage of my overall firepower advantage I don't know you guys don't have a f yeah, they are okay good they are engaging I was concerned why they didn't have a why they didn't have a uh, firing arc so there you go they're going to charge my line Send in a native warrior bodyguard. Let's, let's 
counter charge them with my dudes. Charge my pikes in. Just keep my cavalry moving. These are medicine men. They're pretty scary, but in close range. Well, my native auxiliary men are reloading, so they could not sadly take advantage of it. Charge the native medicine men. Get everyone back. Pretty much there's no point risking my men, wasting my men. Even experience I earn here will be fairly useless because most of my army will most of my army will lose it when they grow. When I re replenish their forces, so there's no real critical need to uh, Take him out, but there we go. We've opened up a border with our French allies to the north, and we now have access to a town, which is a weaver's cottage, which, while it's providing income, that income, the income of that one cottage is probably going to be more than offset by income gained from um, research and development. So let's destroy the horse breeder in the town. Let's get... Where did I send my minister? I think it was over here to create trouble. Catholic missionary. There he is. Well, supposedly. Let's bring him back to Cayuga to help convert the population to our side. I think I might just spend the, some spend some cash rebuilding my army. Let's also because he's just a weaver's lodge. It provides some good income, but a school overall will be worth more to us, especially in the short term. Because we have you can see right then we we were starting to butt up into problems with fighting a conventional, fairly conventional Native American army, which is, should be something we can manage. Um, but yes, especially as I'm looking towards the 13 colonies as future potential adversaries. Apart from that, I don't think I can spend this cash anywhere else. Cool. So do, I also do need to want to keep it to buy the school and to help upgrade this government building. But we're now on the research tree. Which is good for us. Uh oh. Do not like that the Brits have a navy that size. So this is part of the reason why it could be interesting to take over the Pueblo nations, because the route I would take would be to attack them um, and make them tax-free to spur growth of their shipyards. In order to build a military dockyard. Although I could get that through attacking the pirates. It would mean sacrificing the trade of a sugar resource. But in the short term I think growing our naval strength will be critical. Because we depend on trade. And without trade our empire dies. Unless of course I can use my school to research... Probably some agricultural text. I have lots of farms. So it would be good to build up my farming baseline to help get my towns growing to develop more industry. It would mean having to take on a slightly pacifist role in the short term, but that's okay. I'm not looking for trouble at the minute. I've taken out one big enemy. Well, I've taken out a potential enemy and I've secured um, a route to future development for my faction. But it remains to be seen uh, if we can make something of it. And I'm slightly concerned that <laughs> the Ottoman Empire is going to start breaking the game already with their end turns. 
I don't know, maybe they've got a particularly difficult geopolitical challenge over in their part of the world, which we don't have visibility of. But we shall see. Eventually, we'll get over there and invade their territory. And it's good to see the French flag in Quebec did move, so the game isn't dead. <laughs> but it could cause problems in the future. But let's see. As long as it doesn't mean they're going to declare war on us. That's all that matters. And it's pretty nice to know that we're probably not going to have any problems with the French. Because like the 13 colonies and the Brits, it feels like the AI was kind of coded to want to attack us, but couldn't because we were a protectorate. So I'm hoping the same thing happens with France, but then we do have the potential for the Brits to still cause us a lot of pain. Yeah, I would like I would like to start researching naval technologies, but I have no way to actually take advantage of it because I don't have any military shipyards. So I think farming and military techs will be a good shout. Maybe some philosophical ones, but I think I've got more fundamental issues than than that. <laughs> I don't have enough towns yet. <laughs> to worry about growth growth rate of my towns I need to get my population growth rate up to get towns to develop for things to happen but I'm a bit concerned about why this is happening <laughs> and what it means for the rest of the campaign if this does happen then I'll probably cut the recording at the end of every end turn rather than sit through this because as you can probably tell I'm running out of things to ramble about Hmm. But yeah, at least it's nice to know it's not my computer. I've got a good processor in there now. I've got the proper, the proper full operating system in there now. I've got. I mean, I know it's only a 1060, only a 1060. Ugh. It's a 1060, and that's it's more than more than adequate to run this game. Still waiting on my 3080. I'm one of the people that are down as a pre-order, although I'm not expecting it this side of Christmas um, it's going to be the got the Asus tough version 10 gig I think um, yeah it'll be nice to get that going but you know I'm sure you guys are all well aware of the absolute monumental balls up and video I've done on release okay I might just I might just cut the recording because this is This is a long time. I'm not sure how long I've been talking for, but... Long enough. So, I'm going to cut the recording here, or attempt to cut the recording, because my software can be a bit... Like, right now, my the clock I've got... I can The clock that I can see that shows how long my section is. Oh. Haha! <laughs> Threatened to give... To stop... Stop giving them publicity. Um, yeah, I'm not going to watch this next turn. <laughs> um, I'll cut the recording... And then if they start playing ball, I'll st I will continue to start showing the end turns. But yeah, if they keep being funny, then I'll just let them let them know I am unhappy with them. Good, okay, so they're probably a bit unhappy with us now, but it's because we've got a big army sat here they can deal with it. So let's get a school built. Priest is converting the population rapidly. Let's get the school built and let's get any more replenishment that needs doing done. And let's also build another fifth rate. Because I'm pretty sure the bigger these commercial ports can actually build fairly decent ships. Well, not the most immediate one, but. I'm pretty sure the trade ports are okay when it comes to naval when it comes to naval recruitment later on. It's a pity I can't secure. Yeah, Britain really does not like me because they really do not like France. France booted me out to trade with someone else. The devils. Don't worry, their comeuppance will will arrive. 
So I might get into some problems with the Cherokee when Spain, when or if Spain declares war on them to try to take Florida. In which case it gives me Cosas Belli to take cover Havana and Hispaniola. Um, so I'm going to do one more in turn right before I end the part. So oh, let's keep the keep you moving and actually let's build up, build this farm. Cool. So I'm going to cut the recording here. See you in a sec, guys, um, for the next turn. God damn. The Ottomans' turn literally took 10 minutes to go by. <laughs> so I'm probably going to make... Uh, oh. <laughs> I'm definitely not showing you guys the end turns because even I was getting bored and I'm sat here playing on my phone. If I'd have known that, I wouldn't have recorded the first one. Um, but I didn't know. Um, yeah, this could be frustrating, particularly at a time where I'm pretty much going to be burning in turns because I've not got much else to do. Which is, you're rebuilding, you're growing quite nicely. I'm going to com start complaining about clamour for reform. That's going to helpfully be got rid of by by um, the presence of new government buildings. I've got a bit of cash. I guess I suppose it makes sense to keep... to keep building. And there's a question about is it worth... Well, Michigan I'm going to keep as a, as a uh, civil uh, state because you get... For Joseph, um, Kikyonga, and I think I thought there was another one. It might be this chap over here that you get a good few selection of towns. So I want them to earn as much money as possible. Some of these, well, Kayuga is probably going to become a military barrack, a military governor's place, um, because it's so close to the next potential front line. And they're 100 percent Catholics, so now my priest is going to start clearing the ground. Start to inject some religious unhappiness. So I'm gonna build a cobbled roads, but actually how am I gonna do that or am I gonna build Fur traders aren't that useful for me. Well at least not up here, because I'm not gonna be able to get the trade, get the goods out to trade for a while. I might just upgrade. Michigan up to the governor's mansion, and I'm definitely not going to earn this money back for a long time. Um, well, at least until I start getting some good research. Um, can't trade with anyone new, unsurprisingly. I suppose it probably would be better to, to invest in cobbled roads. To help in that growth more than the government buildings. Right anyway, then we're going to end another turn. So you can see how this would be a bit repetitive. My turn's over in three minutes, and it takes ten minutes to end to do an end turn cycle. So see you in next turn, guys. Okie dokie, guys. This is a real kick in the crotch, um, but it seems like we have encountered a glitch, which means that the Ottomans now crash the game. So because we previously weren't at war and the game would crash and crash and crash during the end turn phase last time I sat there for a half an hour and nothing moved um, then I checked the uh, check task manager for some reason even though my CPU and memory utilization is very low my power draw on the CPU is very high um, pff, to be honest I don't know because I can't we weren't at war previously, but we were crashing and crashing and crashing. So the only way I can influence their behaviour from this distance of this cache is to declare war on them and hope that they would maybe move their troops in a different way or do different things. Um, but it seems not to not to have worked. It seems determined to it seems determined to crash permanently. Um, and I. I so I've been trying to hack at it for the last hour. So I think I've probably got to restart, even though I don't really want to, because everything's gone great. 
Everything's gone well. Nothing's wrong. I've not got any income problems. Everything's great, but it's just... Want to hit that end turn button? It goes to the Ottomans, and the game falls over. So, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed, and we'll see you next time before I restart restart my Louisiana campaign. Because yeah, I hoped that it was going to be a temporary problem. But no, seemingly the Ottomans now make it grind to a halt. And even if... It's the last time I waited for half an hour to see if I left it alone, what would happen? But even if it carries on after half an hour, I'm not going to carry on playing a campaign if it takes me half an hour to hit an end turn and I'm not doing anything during my turns. Like, literally, my last turn was three minutes. I'm not going to... That ratio doesn't work. Three minutes in a turn versus half an hour waiting. When I want to play games, I want to play games. I don't want to play a game for couple of minutes and stop for half an hour play a bit more um so it's super duper frustrating i'm gonna have to restart i don't know ideally i'll restart in line with my schedule but to be honest this has really wound me up so i don't know <laughs> if it's going to be in the same schedule um in the same place so thanks for watching guys hope you've enjoyed sorry this is this has happened and it's really frustrating because i've wasted an hour of my life trying to uh, get it fixed so see you later guys